number talk. We're in unit one, seventh grade curriculum, lesson five. The number talk must go on even though it's mismatch day. Do you ever hear the show must go on? The number talk must go on. Okay, boys and girls with a number talk. This is our first one that we did this year, right? Okay, everyone starts fist to chest. So everyone's got their fist to chest. And the reason that we do that is it's a little more private once you have an answer. This means that you're thinking. And once you have an answer, you would just show that you have one strategy. And then I would challenge you to stretch your thinking and try to come up with a second different way to do the problem. And it's all using our brain. We're not writing things out right now. We're just using our head. Okay, so then you would just wait there. And the reason we do that is if people are all raising their hands, then all of a sudden you feel the pressure of seeing all the hands of people that already know and you're not sure yet. This is a little bit more private, so there's less stress and pressure. Okay, so everyone's going to start fist to chest. Are we recording? Just checking. I'm just checking. I don't. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll cut that part out. Okay, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to think about this. Okay, so I am looking for people that are still sitting with fist on chest and they might have a solution to this and how they got it. Yes? Um, I took 16 and 176 um, and I divided 176 by 16. So you did something like this? You and what did you get? Is he correct? Okay, does somebody have a different solution that has their finger that I can see? Anybody else? Yes? Um, I just did, so I did 16 times 10, which is 160. 16 it, times 10 is 160. And then I added 16 to make 176. And then... I did 11. I got 11. So your answer is 11. Yeah. Is that right? 11 is the correct answer. But I love this strategy that the other student talked about because we can just use division. It's difficult to do that division in our heads, though, isn't it? Yeah. OK. Anybody else that got 11 but did a different way? OK, then let's focus on this student's way. To make it easier, this student used friendly numbers, so 16 times 10, pretty easy to do using mental math, is 160, and then counted up the rest of the way to 176. Okay? All right, let's do the next one. Fist to chest. What value for x would make this statement true? Yes, tell me one of your strategies. I noticed that it, it has, it has, it, it's a fraction. Since so you're saying it has to be a fraction? Yeah. Okay. I know that. What is your answer? If my answer would be 116. Okay, let's start with that. I should have asked you that first. So your answer is 116, and how did you do it? Well, I, knew, I knew that 1 divided by, 16 divided by 1 was 16. So I had, so I did the, I, Instead of doing 16, I put 16 over 1, and then reverse 16. 16 over 1, and then, and then you flipped it? Yeah, flip-flopped. Okay, and then what did you do with these two fractions? So what I did with 1, 16, 1, that was just to, uh, I, I just, I did the inverse of it. You did the inverse of it, excellent. And Do you know what operation this is? This is division. This is division? Wait, no, it's multiplication. It's multiplication? I'm just asking. Is it multiplication or division? Division. Okay, so are you dividing these two numbers? No, no, no. We're multiplying 116. We're multiplying this by this? So I'm going to use a dot for multiply. Are you multiplying these two fractions together? Yes. Okay, now tell me what to do. And it's a 16 on the, the numerator is 16 and the denominator is also 16. Okay, how did you get that? 
16 times 1 is 16. Okay, 16. 16 times 1 is 16, and six, 1 times 16 is? 16. And what is 16 sixteenths? One whole. One whole. Let's do one, two, three, clap for him. One, two, three. Okay, he said a lot of important things there. He got a little confused in explaining only because he knew what he did in his head. But don't you have trouble sometimes saying it to somebody? And that's why we've been working on our language routines. We want to work on how we articulate our explanations, how we write them out. And he actually incorporated, remember I said we have a new vocab word that's not really new, but we're bringing it into this lesson. He said inverse. What is this word? Reciprocal. So when you're using the inverse of a number, the flipped version, I think you said, 16 over 1 becomes 1 16. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's do the next one. Let's see if you can use some of these applications of what these students did in the next problem. Fist to chest. Look at everything. Look at all that thinking. Own the thinking now. It can be yours too. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, so what I did is... I What's your answer? Um, three, um, three halves. So your answer is three halves, and tell me how you got that. Um, because if it has to be one, then um, the two thirds would be have had have to be flip flop to make them even. Okay, but what operation are we using? Multiplication. Okay, so we're multiplying. We're again using that dot notation because now we have an unknown value. We don't want to get mixed up. This means an unknown value, not the multiplication sign. So times, and then you said flip it, which is using the? Okay. And then can you tell me how to multiply these two fractions? So yeah, and then I did two times three, which equals six. And then I did uh, three times two, which also equals six. So six over six is the same as? One. one. Yes, let's do one, two, three, clap for him. One, two, three. Okay, now you guys own, synthesize what we learned here. What is something that you learned from this number talk? Especially the last two. And maybe incorporating our new vocab word. What is something you learned? Yes, back there at the back. Um, so how, how to use reciprocal and how to like multiply, multiply fractions to get an unknown value. How to multiply fractions to get an unknown value. How to use a reciprocal. I love it. One, two, three. Somebody else. Something in common here. Tell me what you learned about this. Let's add to his brilliance. What did you learn about this? Yes, right here. Even if you had like a bigger number, like 16, then if you times it by a fraction, then you would get a 1. Any fraction? No. Well, use what we learned. Times it by what? Phone a friend. Me. Somebody that's raising it. You're smart too. Do you, is there something on the board that could help you? Say it, say it with confidence. If you multiply it by its reciprocal. It's in there. I was just going to wait and be patient because I believed in you and I knew you could produce what I needed. Okay, so who can restate that brilliance? Yes. Let's just say any number. Can we generalize it? Who can tell me what we learned about any number? Can you do it with any number? Like say any number? If you put any number over one and then flip it, that times whatever number it is times both of those fractions with each other, um, that equals the number over the number, which also equals one. Okay, what she said, you could take any number if it's a whole number, we would put it over the denominator of 1 and multiply it by its, it's reciprocal. reciprocal. And then we would multiply the numerators and denominators and we would get like 16 over 16, 110 over 110 or whatever it is. And that is always going to equal 1. So could we generalize and say any number multiplied by its reciprocal is? Very good. Let's do a one, two, three clap for everybody. One, two, three. That's it for today.